and I like to, wanted to do this. Blah, 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 blah. <sighs> Refreshing. What is going on today, guys? Today's video is going to be all about homeschool and everything that revolves around it, especially if you have a child who is visually impaired or blind. But first, if you like this type of video and like this type of content and want, want more visually impaired content and encouragement videos, as well as maybe some geeky and retro videos, please hit that subscribe button and bell notification so that you'll get notified whenever I post a new video like this one. So here's everything that I'm going to go over in this video. I'm going to talk about the advantages of homeschooling, the disadvantages of homeschooling. Then I'm going to talk about homeschooling rules, um, just all the basics about how to get started in homeschooling, um, homeschooling routes that you can take, all different kinds of costs, um, how to connect with other homeschoolers, curriculum, and maybe some tips, and then all of the links that I'm going to be talking about will be included in the description below, so please be sure to check that out if you're looking for any of the information that I am talking about. So first and foremost, I just wanted to say thank you, thank you so much. I have reached over 100 subscrib subscribers, and I will have that video and giveaway coming soon, so be sure to look out for it. Okay, so homeschooling. This is my personal experience with homeschooling. I did go to public school from kindergarten to sixth grade. Um, in the seventh grade, my mom decided to homeschool me because of being legally blind. She had had some problems with the school system involving that aspect or situation. And so we decided that homeschooling would be the best route. So I loved homeschool for many different reasons and I'm going to talk about them along with all of this information that I'm going to give you. This is something I've always loved and I will definitely encourage other people to go the homeschool route. It is something that whenever we have children, I definitely will be homeschooling my kids. So let's get right into it, I guess. Okay, so first thing we're going to talk about is advantages. And to me, there are many, many different advantages to homeschooling. But I picked the top three that I think are the best ones. So number one, you get one-on-one -on -one time with your child or children. You know, even if you have children, you still have more one-on-one -on -one time with them than you would if they went to public school or private school. So number two is, let me get this down here. Number two is peer pressure. And this was one of the main reasons I loved homeschool. I really didn't get, you know, bullied a lot in school. There was a couple of times that people would say something to me. I was very fortunate in that situation. But I know that there are a lot of kids who did get bullied. A lot of peer pressure goes on. I did get peer pressured one time in sixth grade. Some of my classmates came in the bathroom and while I was in there and they were fixing to snort Tylenol and asked me if I wanted to do it with them. And I was like, no, y'all are stupid. <laughs> That's exactly what I told them. I was like, y'all are stupid. <laughs> I mean, you're always going to have peer pressure as a person, just even adults have peer pressure. But whenever you homeschool, that it brings that peer pressure down by so much, you know, because they're not constantly around kids that are pressuring them to, them to do things just because it's cool or just because of, you know, trying to be popular or anything like that <clears throat> to be able to fit in. So I really loved that aspect of it and I never had to worry about that. Number three is learning at your own pace. And this was another one of my favorite tips. All, all three of these are my favorite tips. I was always very good with English for some reason. Um, it just kind of came naturally to me. And whenever I was in ninth and 10th grade, I met a, um, a college professor who gave me one of her English tests and she's like this is the next test I'm gonna give you know we just me and my mom and her all kind of had a conversation about starting college and everything that was gonna happen soon 
And so she gave me the test and out of, I think there was 20 or 25 questions on there, I missed one. And so um, also in sixth grade, whenever I took the SAT, or for the seventh grade, whenever I took the SAT for the first time, I made um, post high school level on um, English. It was something I've just always been good in. And I am, sometimes can be, <laughs> I say sometimes, but I can be a grammar Nazi. <laughs> um, but math, I always have had problems with. It took me a long time to learn algebra. But I did eventually learn and I um, was very glad that I learned. And after that, I kind of picked up everything a little bit easier. It was still difficult, but I did pick up things a little bit easier. So I really liked that part about learning at your own pace because I was able to advance so much in English and then I could kind of learn at my own pace in math. So now I'm going to talk about the disadvantages with homeschool and to me there is one main disadvantage. I only have one disadvantage in this because this is just like I said my personal experience and to me there's only one disadvantage and that is being able to socialize with other kids or other people your own age you know just having that socialization and a lot of people that ask about homeschooling bring that up but there are plenty of things activities and stuff out there that you can get involved with my mom put my sister in softball because my sister uh, my sister was not legally blind or visually impaired but she put her in softball um, a community softball and um, I was involved with theater and I loved theater it brought me out of my shell it just made me but it made me become more extroverted and I loved it so much it was a really quick change because I used to I was used to be very shy when I was a kid and so I'm um, I loved theater so much. You can learn um, team building, you know, from it. You could be having an awful day and then you can go and be in theater and you can pretend to be completely somebody else and it just takes all the stress away. Plus like hanging out with all of my friends and everything, that was always great. But, you know, not only just different activities, but you can take classes, art classes, dance classes, and then there's church. You can have all different kinds of youth groups and church and just you know all kinds of socialization there as well as different homeschool groups and I will talk more about that in just a second oh my gosh I'm really thirsty today <laughs> I haven't had tea in forever so I have to have my southern sweet tea of course okay so let's begin on homeschooling first of all you want to look up the homeschooling room <clears throat> mm, the homeschooling rules in your state um, all the rules can be different. They're, they vary from state to state. They also vary from county to county. So you definitely want to check into that. You can either Google homeschooling for your state or county and usually you'll find something on maybe the Department of Education website or your county website or anything like that. Or you can check the HSLDA. I'm going to put all these links below again um, in the description. But the HSLDA is the Homeschooling Legal Defense Association. You can find all different kinds of information on there. They have a map of the United States and they have laws for each state as well as all the counties. Now this is one thing that I did not know until recently and I'm not sure that it was in kind of in motion whenever I started homeschooling because that was a long time ago. <laughs> I just recently found out that they have, if you're going to homeschool your child who is visually impaired or blind or has special needs, in some states, not all the states, and unfortunately Alabama is not included in that, but in some states, the school or the Department of Education in your state, um, just as your child would need an individualized education plan in a public school or a private school, they are supposed to provide that same assistance to you even if you are homeschooling your child. So not only would they need to provide for textbooks and all different curriculums and stuff like that, but they also would provide computers and um, if they needed specialized programs on the computer or handheld devices like any different kind of technology that they need, they're supposed to help with that. Like I said, this is not all states, 
so you better <clears throat> you will need to check into this if your child is supposed to have any kind of physical therapy or has a problems getting to and from a special doctor or anything like that they're supposed to provide a bus to help you with that situation they're supposed to provide that for you like I said you need to check into your state and your county and see what all is covered because like I said in Alabama none of this is covered whenever you're talking about homeschooling the reason it's covered is because in, in some states homeschooling is considered a private school in Alabama, homeschool is not considered a private school, but in Tennessee it is. In New York it is. In, um, I think it's Texas and Georgia it is. So make sure to check into it. And like I said, I will link all of this in the description box. Okay, so the next thing is homeschool roots. And these are just different kind of ways that you can teach your child. There is parent to child and that is to me probably one of the best options is so that you can definitely have more one-on-one -on -one time with your child the second option is private tutors now the private tutors that you can hire to come to your house or maybe they have an office or something somewhere or they have they homeschool at their house something like that and then there are church groups that homeschool they all get together maybe at the church or um, they get together at someone's house or something like that now we're going to talk about costs and i didn't go over this earlier but um, the hslda which i said was the homeschool legal defense association they have all different kinds of links and articles and you know all the different homeschool rules and stuff all on their website but you can also pay a fee to be in their membership and you pay this fee i think it's around a hundred it's a hundred or two hundred dollars i can't remember it might be cheaper than that I, I haven't actually looked into it it might be like sixty dollars but it's like per year and as long as you have that membership if you're homeschooling if anybody start, starts giving you problems about homeschooling your child they will go to court for you and that that cost covers everything and like I said, you can call them and talk to them about about all different kinds of situations too, not just like legal legal things. You can call them and talk to them about if you're looking for something in particular for your child who is blind or visually impaired. And they will help you with that. They're very helpful. The next thing is cost for the homeschool group or school that you're gonna go with. Now everybody charges different prices. The price that my homeschool charged was um, $180 per year, and that's not that's not just for one child. That was for the whole family, so it didn't matter if you had one child or you had six or seven, so or even ten. But that was for the whole family. Now the biggest cost that you're going to run into when homeschooling is going to be all the textbooks and curriculum. There are a lot of free sources out there as well, so make sure just to do your research on everything. I found a couple of websites that offer free or cheap um, ideas. I especially found one on Pinterest that gives you um, some arts, different arts and activities for a child who are visually impaired or blind. Like I said, all of this is going to be in the links, so check that description box. Oh, and then there's going to be all the different smaller just add-ons of cost for like pens, pencils, notebooks, binders, you know, just basic supplies. The next thing that you'll want to do is connect with other homeschool groups or other people who homeschool because not only will you learn from each other, but they're also surprise provide that support that you need if you get just overwhelmed or stressed or you know something's not working out just search for homeschool groups in your area or homeschoolers in your area and you can also join some facebook groups as well like i said they'll provide all different kinds of um, assistance they're just a really great group to be a part of it's always nice to have that support around you so the last things you want to do is plan the curriculum now this goes back to reading all of the different homeschool rules for the different states and counties and for the area that you live in some states and counties require you to follow the curriculum of the public school 
and you can usually buy that curriculum or get that from the public school itself or the Department of Education or something like that. Other states like Alabama, they actually let you plan your curriculum however you want. You're just free to plan it however you want to do it. Whenever you're free to plan the curriculum the way you want, you get to choose the days that your child goes to school. You get to choose what they will learn. You get to choose the field trips that they're going to go on. You get to choose all different kinds of activities that they want to do. It's just really nice to have that. Sorry, that was my dog. Stop it. Lay down. Thank you. But that's always really nice because... I remember specifically whenever I was in, uh, when I was being homeschooled was, you know, we wouldn't get like spring break off or winter break off or anything like that, but we got our birthday off or we got days off to go on field trips where other people were in school. A few curriculum ideas, there are, especially for blind and visually impaired children, there are audio books out there. There are large print books out, textbooks out there. There are braille textbooks out there. So make sure, like I said, to do all of your research and there's all different kinds of just technology and options available to us now that were not available just a couple of years ago. Some tips that I want to leave you with and, you know, maybe just some tips on how to homeschool your child who might be visually impaired or blind if you're thinking about it is assistive technology. Contact your state agencies like vocational rehabilitation, um, schools of the blind, and just all different kinds of places like that because there are definitely assistive technology that is available that can help your blind or visually impaired ch child. The next thing would be tactile learning experiences. And this can be anything from different activities such as art or maybe even playing in a sandbox. You can also have raised maps and graphs that will help your child as well. Another thing that you may want to do is teach your child Braille and you know as they learn it you'll learn it too and you can help them better. Magnifiers, sc smart scanners, and readers. And smart scanners and readers can be a little bit expensive but there are apps out there for your phone that will convert text to speech and they are a lot cheaper than some of the smart, uh, smart readers. <laughs> I'm sorry this was so long guys please um, let me know if you have any questions but I definitely did a lot of research for this I hope you found it helpful um, I'm sorry it took a long time but I wanted to make sure to give you uh, a lot of information and just different options that you know you may not have known about so my question for you is have you ever tried homeschooling or have you thought about homeschooling or you know maybe you didn't know about you know about being able to homeschool so let me know that down in the comment below i love you guys i'll talk to you later please be sure to keep a positive mind a positive life and positive vibes bye y'all